so here we go. Uh, coding abstract algebra, chapter nine of functional programming made easier. Uh, for again, for people who have not ever been on the uh, stream before, you can get this book on Lean Pub here. Okay, Lean Pub FP made easier. Uh, book's pretty good. I I've enjoyed it so far. Definitely learned some stuff about Pure Script, which I haven't done before. I should check if there's a pure script tag. There is not. So we will continue using the Haskell tag as it is close enough. All right. So uh, here we go. Writing the semigroup type class. Um, so we're going to like just include unit, which is this type here. And uh, we'll also include this unit so that we don't have this problem. And also pure because we want those things. And I think that's probably that. All right. So now without consulting pursuit or looking back, try, write, try to write the type class for semigroup. Okay. Uh, class semigroup. Where? Append. Oh, this is going to be M. Is that legal? It's, I think this is actually an F. I have to look back because I don't remember how to type these in in this language. So we have class semigroup and we need like something in an F, but I guess F needs to be a functor. Is that what it's trying to tell me? I think technically it has to be an applicative, but... What what's wrong here? Maybe it's supposed to be F and then for all A. I don't remember what this is supposed to look like, so I'm going to go look. It's been a while. Uh, we should just do it like this. It doesn't need to be in a functor. I don't know why I was thinking that. It's just a thing. I don't know what I'm thinking about. Okay. This is what happens when you switch topics randomly. Okay, so anyway, that's that. So a semigroup is just things that can be uh, um, put together or appended, combined, whatever you want to call it. All right, so we did that. Yeah, and then there's infix r... Five append Is that the order. I just don't. I don't remember these things. I don't do them enough. Okay. Infix five append as this. There we go. Okay. 
syntax. There we go. All right. There we go. Cool. Got it. Uh, kind of hard to not consult documentation when you put it right there. Uh, but this is going to be semi group A like this. Uh, no, like this, I think. Uh, monoid A where uh, empty A. Right? Why do we have to call it empty? I think we can just call it empty because we're not going to pull in anything else called empty. Um, okay. Then we're going to say writing semi group for and bool. Okay. Let's bring some stuff in. We need these generics. And we're going to have a data type and bool. Derive instance generic Okay, so just some Just do this. Uh, shadow definitions. What are you what are you complaining about? I don't understand. Okay, so there's our uh, append and empty functions. We won't use empty because that will also cause a an issue. Um, another question becomes, is this going to cause... I feel like this is really not what we should do. We should really just import the things we need because it's going to be problematic. So unit, unit, uh, class, eek, class, show. Here. Okay. Fine. There we go. Uh, okay. So we're just trying to implement this thing. So instance... Um, semi group and bool where um, append we put both of these things in a lambda I don't think we can so I think that this is just going to be like Uh, 
Oh. Um. I think so. Okay. So I'm pretty sure that that's it. That should be true, and everything else should be false. Um. Okay. Fine. Yeah, we would have to implement this, so we can skip that. We got that, cool. Uh, we, we can quickly write monoid. Um, so that should be true, if I understand correctly. Otherwise, you could never get true when you're doing and a folding. Okay, a true, yep. Verify laws. Um, sure, I mean, I guess we can write this. Um, so there are tools to do this. I'm not sure I really want to write this. It's just like a weird example. Um, because, so, okay, the reason I'm calling this weird is that we really want to be able to generate like a bunch of these. And then we really want property tests here. So maybe we should just look into property tests for... For this and see if we can do it real quick because I think that would be kind of interesting in general and I would rather write a property test here so let's see if we can do that real quick so uh, property tests pure script I assume there's just a, a quick check library okay so we can just do uh, spago add quick check I think it's install. Okay, and then over here we'll open up uh, test main dot pers, and we should add some tests. So we do that, and we need to write a property test. So it's going to look like this. Uh, we're going to import main uh, specifically class well and bool stemmy group Probably. And here we'll bring in unit. And then we need quick check. Where does quick check come from? Is it just test quick check, probably? Test dot quick check. Quick check. Let's try that. Spago test. Installing the stuffs. Okay. These are just some deprecation warnings. Those are fine. Um, so here is where we, we go. So these are going to be, uh, A, B, and C. And then we want our property to be that, uh, A, B, C, 
C is the same as um, A, B, C. So, okay, that will come from here. So we need to implement an arbitrary instance. So let's see if that's in here or if it's not. So quick check, peer script, arbitrary instance. Okay. So these are just the things, these are not examples. Um, maybe there are, are more here. Guide. Okay, so there's probably like a one of function in here. So we basically need something like this. So we're going to say um, we need to bring in a test quick check arbitrary. And we want to bring in class arbitrary. And then we're going to say instance arbitrary and bool where. And it gives us a function called arbitrary. And then we're going to say this is one of, I'm guessing, and a b true a, B, false. Okay, so we need to find, like, how we pick something, because I, I don't know how. Uh, and then once we've figured that out, we should be good to go. Uh, it's probably in gen. Size, repeatable, stateful, variant. No. Such that sized. Choose. That's a number. One of. Non-empty array. Of gen. Okay, this is what we want. Elements. Okay. We're almost there. So we need this. And we need gen elements. And here we put elements. And I think we can, oops, close this. Restart that for a second to hit. Uh, close this so it's more readable. Okay, we just need to build a non-empty array, which uh, I don't think I've done before. S non-empty. Okay, so this comes from non-empty, so we need to get that. Um, Spago install non-empty. We're going to have to close that. HG import. Dip. 
data non empty data non empty and it just becomes okay non empty dot dot I'm gonna say elements non Uh, let's just remove that and use regular old parentheses. Okay. Now. So it's a non-empty array. It needs to be an array. Uh, wait, I don't understand. So we can just use this? Okay, fine. Uh, I know it's not empty, so it's not a big deal. So non empty array and we'll just make this a non empty array like that where does this come from How do I build one of these safely? I'm confused. Um, here we go. Wait, no, because this is just, this is re-export. How do we safely construct one of these? I'm confused. We certainly don't want from array, so... How do I take... This is confusing. We could just append array onto a singleton, but that feels weird. Is there not like a a function to just build one of these things? Am I like blind? Maybe it's snock. That's a thing, right? What's this thing do? It takes, okay, and then puts one at the end. That's not really what I want. Okay, uh, fine. So let's figure this out. Kind of annoying, actually. So we want uh, from non empty singleton and um, cons, I guess. Okay. So, well, 
Hans AB true onto singleton AB false. I'm so confused. Data array not empty. So what's the difference between pure script non empty? What's this? Is this the same thing? I don't think it is. I think this is the wrong thing, which is why I'm incredibly confused. Um, yeah, so this should be arrays. This explains my confusion. And this comes from Arrays. Okay. And then this is data array non empty. And we should have cons singleton. And then this can be cons. And then we should be good. Getting there. So it doesn't understand what these things are. Um, maybe we can bind them to something. Is this allowed? Yes. What else are you complaining about? Yeah, we don't actually need this. Okay. All right. Moment of truth. Nice. Very cool. Uh, so now we have like a mechanism to actually check this stuff, which is pretty cool. Uh, we could easily write this function to like bind these one time so um so this is like a prop semi group which is a for all a um a to a to a to bool Right, and then we can just do quick check prop semi group. Wait, how do we do that? How do we bind A here? We don't have. Um,
<laughs> that's not where that goes. Okay. So, class semi group. Wait, so we can't write this? Oh, eek. I think this should go here. So, eek, a. This is prelude. We'll get, we'll get there. I think this would be cool if we can get this done. So then, um, Maybe we only have to now supply that A must be and pool. And maybe we don't even have. It seems like this should fail, right? Yeah. So now we only have to define that one of these is and pool. And it should be good because we, we kind of explained to the compiler that that is fine. I think. Uh, I'm also kind of curious if we only had to do this before as well. So what if we just grab this and replace it here? Get rid of this for a second. Yeah, the compiler is perfectly happy doing that, but obviously it's easier to write this. Um, okay, so we have semi group and eek. We're going to grab an A. And then also this thing has to be monoid A. Then we're going to say empty A is the same as A. And A empty is the same as A. That comes from here. Like that. So this is the left and right identity laws for monoid. And then we can do the same thing here, which is really nice is we can just say prop monoid uh, A. Discard. Sure. Nice. Okay, we might want that for the future, so it's nice to have an arbitrary instance there. So that was kind of cool. I uh, learned a little bit about arbitrary, although it, it may have taken us a little longer than I was hoping. Okay, so let's put this back here. Do this. So this sneaks up. Okay, so now we've proved that via a property, um, property law. And then here's the left and right identity laws. So we did that. Uh, we verified it with 100 tests. Um, okay, now we're going to write another instance data. Actually, let's just copy like all of this and then replace it. Uh, so first, we need to replace and bool with or bool. G. And then we need to replace um, 
maybe with OBG. Okay. And then we need to fix this because it's like that. And that should be it. And then we can test these things by saying and bool or bool. There we go. So um, the the empty instance is false. Otherwise, this will fail. I believe. I think that's right. Anyway. All right. So we write most of this. Yeah, we could write it this way as well. Uh, the only time it's false is uh, when you get OB false. And yep. Yeah, logically ordered with any value. Uh, that value is unchanged. Okay, so now we have the verify functions, which we, we wrote in a bit more of a, a nice way, which is nice. Uh, now we got this like clock thing, which, why do I recall seeing this recently? Did we see it in here? Maybe we did. Okay, anyway, zero, one, two, three. Um, we probably want these and we probably want all of this. Okay, so mod four. Um, this is probably zero. Unsure about this right now. And then arbitrary mod four will be cons um, zero. Actually, let's use. This cons okay, and now we need to replace this with something. So Zero, zero and anything is itself. What? What? What is this complaining about? I'm not sure. Okay, so uh, we proved that Z4 was a group. Now we're going to write the code for that. Uh, to do so, we must start with a semigroup instance. We know that the set of values. Uh, represented in peer script like this during the binary operator uh when we're doing our clock arithmetic we're doing addition so our operator is plus we decided everything we need to implement the semi-group instance uh please try it before reading this okay um so the question becomes like how do we do this in an easy fashion without having to combine everything uh, and i don't know the answer to that i feel like we can just you could convert them to numbers and then um, actually do their addition with mod 4, maybe. So it's like uh, 2 
to integer we'll take a mod four to an integer This is just int, right? And then we can just take their modulus. So from integer I don't love this for what it's worth, but like it is safe because Um, but this allows us to write like this a little bit easier. Uh, I think I would prefer X and Y here. So you can say from integer, uh, to integer X plus two integer Y mod four. Um, what is it? S mod? Yeah. Maybe there is not a uh, definition here. So, mod. Is that valid? Can we write that? And this is three. Um, how do we have an unreachable case? Um, we can just pretend for now. This isn't like super functional, I guess, but that's probably fine. Um, Well, we can always actually let let's write a different function here. Um, we're not going to do this. We're going to say um, and then this will be two integer. We're going to take two mod fours. I guess I can do that here, right? So we're going to say case. Q. One. Two. Having that function separate is actually way more dangerous than this. Hi, kitty. Okay, so what's it complaining about? I think it's just saying it's uh, a case expression issue, maybe. Yeah, so it wants us to cover this. So how can we write unreachable case? 
Uh, peer script, unreachable case. How do I mark unreachable code paths? You could use partial unsafe. Yeah, that's from Gary, so that's pretty good. Uh, pursuit s unsafe crash with. Yeah, this is fine. Uh, this is from partial. Okay, so uh, Spago install partial. Partial. Spago build. Unsafe crash with. Um, this shouldn't. Modulus four is broken? Question mark. Like that should be impossible, right? So this is partial. So we would have to be able to mark it as as that, but we cannot. So it's partial unsafe. So import partial unsafe um unsafe crash with. And then we should be able to build again. It wants us to get rid of consoles, so sure. Whatever you say to make you happy. Okay. There we go. So we got unsafe crash with, uh, which like should not happen because we're modulus four. So the only options are zero, one, two, and three. Um, otherwise, you know, something super is super goofy is going on. And then I think that we should have that. And then we can just add our Quick check for um, mod four. Me thinks um, mod four. We only need the type. Uh, the other thing I would like to do is make this a little more readable how do i think we do this in pure script should have just done something else okay and the question becomes can we actually test that oh uh Spago test. Okay, so that failed. It failed with modulus four is broken. Wow. Is this not how modulus behaves, maybe? Uh, Spago REPL? There might be some functions that allow us to move stuff, but I don't remember how it works. So, um, do we have two integer import main two integer zero plus two integer, uh, or three.
Okay. So that should give me four. And then I should be able to mod this with four. Oh. Wait. Am I a maniac? For all B, where B is non zero. R. Where does REM come from? Yeah. Uh, I feel like I'm a maniac. Wouldn't the modulus of four with itself be zero? Am I losing my mind? Oh, it's a precedence issue. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. That's fine. That's totally fine. Uh, except I keep doing this. Okay, okay. I'm not a maniac. I just don't understand precedence. Okay. I was worried for a second there. Um, Real, real worried. So th this has precedence. So the two integers run, and then this runs, and then they're added together, which is why you can have an unsafe crash. So I think that this should fix the test. Nice. Okay. Yeah, so... I think that this is probably fine. Um, like, it's, it's... There's really not that many cases, I guess. I really thought there were more cases. But it seems fine to just do it like this. Is this going to be really slow, though? Like, comparatively? I feel like no. But we'd have to test, like... A thousand of them, probably, or like more, maybe, to see if they're one of them is much faster than the other. I don't know. Let's say I'll just write a note here like the alternative is to just enumerate the cases.
which is fine. Okay. So writing group, which requires monoid A group A, where um, inverse is an A to A function. Okay, so we want to have an inverse function for group. So uh, instance group mod four where, so if I recall correctly, this is a function that takes a element and gets us back like it provides the thing to combine it with to get back to zero. So if we start with zero, then it's empty. It's empty. Because that's like by definition. If it's one, then we need to add two to get to zero. If we're at two, sorry, three. If we're at two, we need two. If we're at three, we need one. So this is, I'm pretty sure that you take the monoid and you take the, whatever is produced by the right side of this, attach it to the first thing and the answer should be zero, if I recall correctly. So let's go back in here and say, uh, We'll grab this, we'll say prop group. So we need to have a monoid, a semi-group, and a group. Oh, uh, we, we can just call it a group. And this can just be monoid because... So if we get an A, we want to say a inverse a, so we need a class group. And then that's going to be equal to zero, if I understand this correctly. Um, And those come from mod four. Oh, right. So prop group, this has to be empty if we want it to be a group. There we go. Cool. Uh, so this thing doesn't need invert, doesn't need what? What, what, are, you, what are you complaining about? The import of mod four, yes. So we just need to type mod four. Okay. And then now we can also quick check the prop group, I think, and make test. Bongo test. Nice. All right. And then test main p i keep closing these i have such a bad habit of doing that but i'm pretty sure that that's the right thing so yes yeah that's exactly right okay uh note the addition of one and three is the same as three and one our operator doesn't have to be commutative but as it turns out it is so if we wanted to, we could create a commutative instance for our type. Okay. Yeah, and commutative is like, doesn't have a property, or sorry, it doesn't have an instance. Excuse me, let me say this correctly. It doesn't have a function, you just define it. Uh, so if it's, if it's commutative, you just say that it's commutative mod four, I think, and I, I think that we can just get this from here, commutative.
Yeah, and then where is this from? Oh, it's like from its own thing. So anyway, we're not going to implement this thing. We're just going to say we could just go in here and type a prop commutative commutative. So if we have an A and an inverse, what do we want to do? We're going to get two of these things. And they should be a group. So we're going to have an A and a B. And we're going to say... What, what is commutation? Why do I always forget what this is? It just doesn't matter which order you do what with them. So we have that. Why why am I forgetting what this is? It just, oh, the order doesn't matter in which you combine them. So right, right, right. Okay. So A B is equal to B A. Man. And then we could just copy this, get a second one, and we could prop commutative B like so. And then Spago test. Perfect. Cool. Did that. Okay. Um, now we do semi group for maybe. So we're just going to bring in maybe here. We aren't using commutative ring. And we're just going to bring in, whoops, import uh, data, maybe. Uh, but that's not going to work because uh, because of the way we have this. So we'll just grab this. Um, then we'll grab these and this. Um, so all of these. This needs to be eek a. Eek. Maybe A. And this needs to be generic A. Generic maybe A. I think. And then I think this is to just show. Like this. Oh, um, oh, maybe this is just like this. Maybe that's just fine. Okay. Um, I forget why that is, but. I think that this is just okay. So now we have uh, this, and we can in implement our semigroup instance. So semigroup maybe A needs to have semigroup A as a super class. And then we can say append equals nothing. Nothing is nothing. Just 
X. Well, it can just be A. And then um, just x, just y is just x, y. Me thinks. Oh, I wrote maybe. Just. Okay, and then instance uh, monoid um, maybe a. This doesn't need to have monoid because empty is just nothing. What is what is this complaining about? Does A need to be a monoid? I feel like the answer is no. Anything combined with itself will just be itself. If I say monoid A, it'll stop complaining, but technically that's not correct, I feel like. I don't know how to get this thing to shut up about A. Does A just need to be a semi-group? Is that... Fine. I think so. I don't think it needs to be anything else. If it's as long as it's a semi group, then it's fine, I think. I don't think that needs to be a monoid. I don't think it would make sense. Does it even need to be a semi group? I feel like the answer is no, but such is life. We'll see what comes out of this. Uh, and then we can also add these things here. So in here, we're going to have class maybe. And then we can write the Oh, we also need a, an arbitrary instance. Where is my arbitrary? All right. And then, so maybe we need an arbitrary A, arbitrary, maybe A. Uh, and we can either have a uh, nothing get an arbitrary and then say it's nothing or singleton val. Please import bind. Um, arbitrary. 
Nice. Okay, so yeah, we either get like something or nothing. And now we can just generate arbitrary things, which means that we can test mod four with maybe, um, it can just be an int. It doesn't really matter what it is, as long as it's something. Uh, this is complaining. Can I import class maybe from main? Why not? Oh, because it's not a class. Ah, I need something that's already a semi group. So we'll just put and bool here. Otherwise, this isn't going to pass. Very cool, I think. I didn't mean to do that. Always keep timing that, which is hilarious. Okay, so this fails, which is interesting. Maximum call stack size exceeded. Weird? What? I don't understand that error at all. Where are we creating a call stack? Oh. I think I see what's going on. Um, so because this arbitrary can create arbitrary justs. So it's just nesting just values infinitely, I think. So what we really want, we want the arbitrary A from this one, and then we'll just wrap it in just, and then it's either nothing or just. I think is what's going on. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. A uh, little, a little kind of a gotcha, but not that bad. Um, so anyway, okay. So we did this and okay. Uh, how much more do we have left? Cause I'm kind of getting really hungry and tired. All right, so um what are we what are we trying to do here? Oh, okay. I see. They're they're bringing up numbers um, because there are two types of monoids for numbers. So, I think the idea is that you would want to write. Okay, so to get a result of twenty, uh, we'd first have to pick the second value. 
Next, to evaluate what's inside parentheses, you have to pick the first. This is just absurd, so you can't just randomly pick. So we'll disregard this. We're calling the first and last to signify that in the long line of appends, we take the first non-nothing value or the last non-nothing value. Okay, we'll do one of these, I guess. Um, Why is it a maybe? Oh, because if it's nothing. Well, maybe we can just do both of these real quick. Um... Biggest problem is now we need this deriving new type nonsense. Actually, we really don't, I don't think. Okay, so... Yeah, let's do these one at a time, I think. So now we can grab all of this. Nope, we just need this. We don't need an arbitrary instance here because we'll just use maybe's arbitrary instance and then wrap it in, in a just. Um, so this becomes first. Um, this becomes first. Okay, and then this is also first. And this is first, nothing. Okay. So I think those stay the same. The difference is that if these are like this, then we just take the first one. Uh, and really this doesn't matter. I think. We'll have to test this. But I think that it's right. Okay, so... We do still need to write one of these. Except this time, we're okay writing this. Because A needs to be arbitrary, maybe needs to be arbitrary, and so it's just arbitraries all the way down, I think. So I th I'm guessing this is right. And then we should be able to write this by bringing in um, da -da 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 first. 
and then this will be a uh, first and this will be first i think yeah seems fine um we should probably test it in the REPL, but like i think it's fine uh the only change with second is that you keep the second one so that's it well the second one's trickier, right? Last is trickier. No, because this will handle the 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 case that case, right? If you get something and nothing, this will take care of that. And then all you need to do is move this one over here. Because if you just get a bunch of nothings, we'll always keep X. So it'll be fine. The difference is that if you get two of them, you keep Y. Yeah, so sec second would just have, instead of an underscore here, it would have Y at just instead of this i think so i think it would be pretty trivial to write last so i'll just write a note here so for last you you take the second one the second let's just write it And then if we get two justs, we just take the second one. Last just underscore is y. And I actually suppose that we should use And I think that's the end of the chapter. <laughs> okay. Nice. So, yeah, uh, easy, quick little video. And then next week we'll get into folds.